for the last like five, however many years, I, I actually, and then I came to Hot Coffee, I started to do entrepreneur. I've done like trying to mobile apps and started a mobile app company. I did all this tech stuff. I did this stuff I knew very well, but I never really could get it launched. And I, I came to the events and was networking and things started churning. And then again, we couldn't launch and I wouldn't take the risk I needed to take. I wouldn't put the money in the right places. And I discovered the secret. And I'll go through this, but really what it takes is a passion that someone else has, a passion that someone else is highly intelligent and knows everything about, and you just have to be completely naive and ignorant to it and just go. And then you're able to make like bold decisions because you have no idea of the consequences up front, and you're, you're fearless because you're like, I'll just do it. Because I, I honestly didn't know anything about Juice until I asked my wife like what she wanted to do with her career. And she's like, I want to start this concept, and I was like, Let's do it. And it allowed me to then move forward, and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you all about. And there's, it's kind of interesting, as I went through this past year, starting this business called The, uh, the Juicery, um, I realized through the uh, actions and some of the decisions we were making, I later started reading these books. Like, people recommend read this book, read this book. And I'm like, reading these books, I'm like, man, I'm kind of like doing this. And I didn't need the book, but like, I did it, and then the book kind of just reassures, like, there's certain things that I'll repeat right now this morning that are just going to tell you like this is just kind of like a repeating thing that people do to get into something and then you run with it and then later you think back like God what did I do the first and most important thing I realized in helping my wife start the business that we're calling the juicery press was I had to listen to those closest to me so instead of it being me 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 what am I doing with my life well what's my biggest project uh, what's important to me I, I took that moment to step back and say hey what's important to to you your partner or you know, your business partner or your wife or whoever you're, you are going to be in it for the long run and you're going to be able to have to test the trenches and, and get something done. You got to listen to them and find out what their needs are and what they might want to do. A lot of creativity can come out of that. Uh, the second thing I, I took a note on was stop planning, just go for it. Like, I was always a planner. Like, no, no, I'm not. I wasn't ever a planner. But I, it's sometimes hard to just go for it. Just just do something. So like quick story, after I found out on like uh, a Saturday, my wife and I were talking, she wanted to do this and I was like, yes, I'll quit my job up in Boston. We won't move the entire family up there. Let's, let's start this um, business. So what do we do? What's the first step? She, I was like, location. That makes sense. Well, where do you want to do this? She's like, well, there's a grand opening at Sprouts. I, I figured we could go there and there looked like there's some empty spaces next to Sprouts. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. That seems lot. That's like a really good spot to have a juicery next to like, like a, a Sprouts, you know, kind of like farmers market <coughs> grocery store. So we we went to the Sprouts grand opening like three days after we made the decision to start this business. And I just called up the number on the window, and I'm like, hey, can I lease this place? And you know, they're like, well, you got to be a business. And I was like, yeah, I'm a business, and I just used what I had, my mobile app company, right? And the third thing is, it, it's it's okay to tell everyone that's helping you or that's gonna stop you that you have no idea what you're doing. And that actually ended up helping me more, like health department, that was a great story. Like, you know, they go in there, and the, the health department has is there for an obviously a really good purpose for the city of Huntsville, making sure companies don't start restaurants and then people get foodborne illnesses and all that. So there are particular rules that I wasn't really paying attention to because mainly I didn't know any of them. So I walked in there just actually on a Friday at like four o'clock and they're closing in an hour and they were already yelling at me because I was supposed to go to them first because there's all these orders of things from licenses, and by the way, I'm not, go talk to Foster Perry or Bruce Perry, or go talk to UH, I'm on the business side of things, because I, I still have really no idea what's going on. There's licenses for everything, everyone wants your money to pay a tax of some sort, and I didn't realize how many taxes you actually pay, it's, it's pretty crazy for everyone that already owns a small business. But um, uh, I told her, I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, help me. And I said that same thing in every courthouse I walked into and I walked in there with the papers and I'm like, I don't know, this is what I have, how do I file this for this permit? Very helpful, very helpful when you just go ahead and open your arms up and say you don't know what you're doing, um, which really wasn't a lie for me at that point. So, and then the fourth point, uh, be agile, uh, don't be afraid to explore and, uh, and adopt new things. So going back to that, don't plan, well okay, obviously you gotta have some plan, right? So start like ballpark figure. That's what we, you know, actually we actually started with the idea of doing a juice bar. Believe it or not, we actually we're going to do a franchise. I, I feel we filled out the application because we didn't know what we we're doing. So I was like, let's do a franchise. That's why they're here. 
it feels very comfortable. There's already a juice bar in town. Seems successful. Like we weren't gonna stray from that because I thought that was already a little different than what I'm used to in computers and stuff. So, um, and then that didn't work out for one reason or the other, and that's, that's another 17 minute conversation. And uh, it all worked out though, because our plan was sort of like this, we were able to like be agile and adjust um, very critical decisions, adjust those decisions to our needs at just the right time. But there were moments where we had to tighten up those decisions and you'll know when it's the time. Just don't, don't, don't feel like you have to overcommit too early. Um, the fifth point, uh, so this kind of goes with telling people like you don't know what you're doing. Like I started calling people and I started getting on the website and I started like realizing like why isn't Huntsville's like, like website for the cities and state and county and the, where you got to go get your sales tax and your permits. Why aren't they like, why isn't there just like, you know, I wanted like a go to one website, start one here one and just like a one stop shop and it all be web based because like. I wanted to do the whole business on my phone, which actually I did some, most of it on this phone. Like I sat in like the sales tax office and I walked up there with the floor. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Is this everything? And she's like, no, you, you missed this whole thing here. You don't have a, you don't have like a new FEIN number. Cause I, I was just switching the business from kid debit, which is my mobile to something else. I was like, oh, you're right. That's a big deal. I'm like, hold on. So I went and sat down and you can actually in 10 minutes on your phone become a business and register with the IRS and get an FEIN number. I walk right up, I'm like, here it is. She's like, oh, okay. So that was kind of cool. But um, basically personal engagement was critical. Like I gave up the phone, I gave up the mobile, the web. I just started like actually driving to places and like going, driving up to a farm and walking in there. I'll have to talk to you later. I need some wheatgrass. Maybe a robot could help me out. But um, like the personal engagement was amazing. Like just being there in front of somebody, it was so much more helpful than a how-to page on a website. And people that weren't even like responsible for that area, they just gave me the checklist and the to-do list, and I was just like taking notes. Like, like I couldn't, I couldn't write fast enough from being engaged face to face. Uh, forget your competition. So I'm on note six, and I got one more after this. So, so of course I'm, I'm very competitive, and I started worrying about like, all right, what's our competition doing? You know, we were going to do this, and they're doing this, and forget about it like that was the poison in like a, the startup like after I convinced people to give me money after we after I was like completely ignorant to failure and I had no idea how we were gonna fail which actually is the scariest part about this because as I'm starting to learn about the business I'm starting to realize exactly how we could fail so that, that's kind of a lesson learned I started like becoming obsessed about the competition and then read in a book it was like chapter 9 and I was like felt like I was skipping around in the book and now I'm trying to follow some of the advice that other people have given me Forget it. Like, don't even don't pay attention to competition. Focus on your vision and your passion, and you won't you won't go wrong. And, and that's actually what my wife's been telling me. I'm very basically, if I keep listening to her, I'll be fine. <laughs> like, she tells me like what to do, and, and she's usually always right. Um, she might she's not come in her lake and tell me nod her head like you finally got it kind of thing. All right, and the last thing. So and this is actually the most important thing. So I'll, I'll, I'm glad I'm leaving it off on this now. So when we first did this, um, we didn't think about it being like a spiritual journey for us. We didn't think about it being like anything that was um, God sent. But we did at a moment, like, I mean, there was a lot going on. We were going to get these big loans from SBA. Uh, I was cashing out some retirement. I'm doing something I think was kind of crazy, which was probably why I was able to make those bold decisions because I didn't know anything about it. But like we had a trust in like this bigger plan, sort of like when people say like just take a leap of faith or just kind of walk blindly into something. Um, that's what my wife and I did. Like, we knew that, I knew that this was for her and this was like her passion. And then at the same time we held hands and just kind of like looked up to, um, and whatever, like some greater being, some greater force that can help give you that extra bit, either of confidence or some, some buffer or some reason and say like, we will be taken care of in this journey. Uh, that has helped us a tremendous amount to, um, move forward in very difficult times where it does challenge your home life, it does challenge your marriage, it does challenge your financial stability. But um, that's one very important aspect to go back to and that's just to know that there is a bigger plan in store and it's kind of helping guide us. So uh, thank you very much. And I appreciate it.